the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. This morning we celebrate the memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God of our fathers, who bestowed on saints Joachim and Anne this grace, that of them should be born the mother of your incarnate Son, grant through the prayers of both that we may attain the salvation you have promised to your people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. From Elam they set out, and the whole community of the sons of Israel reached the wilderness of Sin between Elam and Sinai on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had left Egypt. And the whole community of the sons of Israel began to complain against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness and said to them, Why did we not die at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt? when we were able to sit down to pans of meat and could eat bread to our heart's content. As it is, you have brought us to this wilderness to starve this whole company to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now I will rain down bread for you from the heavens. Each day the people are to go out and gather the day's portion. I propose to test them in this way to see whether they will follow my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they have brought in, this will be twice as much as the daily gathering. Moses said to Aaron, to the whole community of the sons of Israel, say this, present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaints. As Aaron was speaking to, speaking to the whole community of the sons of Israel, they turned towards the wilderness, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the form of a cloud. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel. Say this to them, Between the two evenings you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have bread to your heart's content. Then will you learn that I, the Lord, am your God. And so it came about. Quails flew up in the evening, and they covered the camp. In the morning there was a coating of dew all round the camp. When the coating of dew lifted, there on the surface of the desert was a thing delicate, powdery, as fine as hoar frost on the ground. When they saw this, the sons of, of Israel said to one another, What is that? Not knowing what it was. That, said Moses to them, is the bread the Lord gives you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. In their heart they put God to the test, 
by demanding the food they craved. They even spoke against God. They said, is it possible for God to prepare a table in the desert? Lord gave them bread from heaven. Yet he commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven. He rained down manna for their food and gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread. Mere men ate the bread of angels. He sent them abundance of food. He made the east wind blow from heaven and roused the south wind by his might. He rained food on them like dust, winged fowl like the sands of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and all around their tents. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside, but such crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people all stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables. He said, Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil and sprang up straight away because there was no depth of earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord When we read this Gospel this morning, we're oftentimes tempted just to go straight to, to praying with the different types of soil. And in imagining what type of soil our hearts are, our souls are, and how they, you know, we need to prepare them for our Lord. And, and it's certainly a, a good way of looking at this gospel. Even our Lord himself, in explaining it to the disciples later on, he, he talks about the different types of soil. But if you go to the Bible and, and you look at Matthew's gospel, which is, is written, it, this, this parable is not called the parable of the soil. It's called the parable of the sower. And so this parable reveals more about who the sower is than just the soil. The, the sower, any good sower, any farmer, when he goes out to sow his, his field, is not so careless as to, to put the, the valuable seed on a path. You know, any good sower going out to sow his field is not going to put seed in rocky soil. You know, a, a good sower is not going to go and put seed in, in all, amongst all the thorns, He's going to go, he knows where he's prepared the field. He knows where it's good to plant the seed. And he's going to go and, and put the seed only in, in those fields. Right? But this isn't just any ordinary sower. Right? The sower is God the Father. And when the Father sows his love, he is generous. He's generous. And some might say, if you would say Reckless. But he's, he's so generous in, in sowing a seed because when he looks at us, he's not looking at us and seeing all of our faults and seeing our mistakes and withholding his love. Right? He still pours out his love for us despite our, our weaknesses, despite our failures, despite our, our sins. Right? Many people think that when they, when they sin, God loves them less. Right? God doesn't withhold his love from us when we sin. It is we who are less receptive to receiving his love. Right? And so we, our, our, our hearts, our souls have to be really prepared and, and, and have to be that rich soil and be able to receive that love fully. Right? 
And there obviously can be different things in our lives that can prevent us from, from being that, that rich soil. But the Lord wants to help us to prepare the, our, our hearts to receive his love fully. Right? And, and the Lord has the perfect instrument, the perfect tool in the shed for, prepare, for preparing our hearts. He has the cross. Because if you take the cross and you turn it on its side, it becomes like a plow. And it's the cross that can, that can break up that hard soil. It's the cross that can, that can dig up those rocks. It's the cross that can weed up all those thorns that it can be in our lives. And, and, and allow us to become that, that rich soil so that his word, his love can truly take root, deep roots in our hearts. The Blessed Virgin Mary was that perfect soil. And she was able to receive perfectly the word of God in her own heart, in her own womb, and bear fruit. So we say in the Hail Mary, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And it's, our, and it's Our Lady's model that she, she gives us of what it is and what happens when, when we are that, that good soil, when we allow the Word of God, God's love, to, to truly take root in our lives to, and, and to bear fruit. And so here today, and we, as we celebrate uh, the parents of Our Lady, Joachim and Anne, uh, we ask for their intercession. We ask for Our Lady's intercession here this last day, the last full day here in, in, in Fatima as we've been walking with Our Lady uh, asking her to, to pray for us, allowing us to be receptive as she was receptive to the word of God in our own lives. And when we are, we too will bear much fruit. Gathering together our prayers and petitions, we now offer them to our Heavenly Father. For the sustainability to pray the rosary daily, and always as Our Lady's call, to pray the rosary is perpetual without end. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the holy people and places of God we have come to know and love on this Fatima pilgrimage that linger in our hearts and our minds and inspire us to deepen our prayer life as we remember the profound holiness that we have found and share here in Fatima. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Alencia, the Santa Maria, for the Dominican nuns of the Perpetual Rosary, for the daughters of the Virgin Mother, the sister of St. Paul, and for all the consecrated religious and lay people all over the world, we give witness to the call to prayer and consecra consecrated life, particularly to praying the rosary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and in our hearts, that together through prayer, sacrifice, and love for one another, the face of Christ and the Immaculate Heart of Holy Mary may reign as seen in our hearts here on this holy sanctified ground of the little chapel, the Capalina. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all intentions that remain silent within, and those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray to our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers and petitions we have brought before you and grant them according to your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, these offerings of our homage, and grant that we may merit a share in the same blessing which you promised to Abraham and his descendants, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Veni Succeli et Terra, Gloria Tua. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei, mortem tua, annunciamus Domine, et tua resurrectionem confitemur, done Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Joachim and Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice for our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
They received blessings from the Lord and mercy from God their Savior.
Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should be born from among humanity, so that by a wonderful mystery, humanity might be born again from you. We pray that in your kindness you may sanctify by the spirit of adoption those you have fed with the bread that you give your children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we end, we'll consecrate uh, the United States of America to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And we'd like to join along. We have it in our, um, our pilgrim guides. O Mary, Mary Immaculate, woman of Genesis, prophesied to crush the head of Satan, woman at Cana, who interceded with your son for the wedding couple, woman on Calvary, through whom Christ entrusted us and who received us into your heart as mother, woman of the apocalypse, clothed with the sun and victoriously triumphant over the dragon of evil. O Mary, lady of the, of the rosary of Fatima, who promised that your immaculate heart will triumph, we call on you today with all our hearts and in the company of the three little shepherds to look, to look graciously, compassionately, and with great mercy upon the nation and the peoples of the United States of America. So in need of this time, protect our nation from the evil one, from all forms of deception and from all forms of discord and violence. Woman and queen of peace, inspire us to be instruments of peace and reconciliation wherever God places us at each moment. O mother of holy hope, let us never give up hope of that precious gift of peace that God gives to all those who love him. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.